Going on, guys. It's Luke here for Simbox. I'm delighted this evening to be joined by one of my all-time favourite fighters. I'm not ashamed to say that. It's Million Dollar Anti Crawler. And thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you, mate. Appreciate the love. No, it's good to be here, mate. Absolutely. We sit here on fight weekend ahead of arguably the biggest fight of our lifetime, uh, one of the biggest fights of all time, the undisputed heavyweight world title fight. Tyson Fury, undefeated. Alexander Usyk, yeah. undefeated. Doesn't get much better than this, does it, Ant? No, it's huge. It's huge. And we're just, uh, thankfully, it's it's happening. For a long time, it looked like it wasn't going to happen. But yeah, no, it's finally happening. And um, this is what boxing's missed for a long time. You know, the best fighting the best. And that's certainly the case here. I think no one could have anything other than number one and number two in the division, however they want to say it. Um, and that's these two. And we'll find out who's number one on Saturday night. Absolutely. Now, uh, we've just watched the the Grand Arrivals, you know, the, the shows in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. They love to put on the, the extravagance, uh, the following yes. steps of, of, of obviously Vegas and America in general. Um, Tyson Fury, uh, some of the, the presenters, Andy Odelay and uh, Darren Barker and Barry Jones, made comment on Tyson Fury's appearance that he seems really lean. Now, John Fury has said as well that Tyson could weigh in a, a career lightest or certainly the lightest he's been in the past 10 years. What did you make of it, Tyson Fury's appearance? It's it's interesting, really, because people are saying, listen, Tyson's never been body beautiful, has he? But it looks an awful lot better than what he did against Francis Nagano. But um, I think you could see, listen, bodies don't win fights, but against Francis Nagano, it had sort of the look of a man who just literally got off the couch, you know, for it. Uh, and listen, Tyson, he's and listen, he's for the for the average everywhere, he's not in great shape, but for Tyson, he, he's 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 very lean, isn't he? He's very lean. Um, you think him being in lighter? I, it's an hard one, really, because then that tells you he's going to be moving his feet a lot more when some people would have expected him a bit like Deontay Wilder to just stick it on you, sick, lean on him, you know, force that, you know, force the pace, just look to, just look to sort of drag him down. I remember years ago speaking to Sugar Hill and he was going, I've got one of the, bit, the very biggest men in the division here. He won't fight into his strengths and his, you know, he, his advantage is he's big, he's strong. Listen, he's not a one punch knockout artist, but when a man uses that size, he's going to be very hard to beat. And trust me, a little hard enough. So it is, it is interesting to think how much. I'd be interested to see how much weight he's actually lost since the Nagani fight. Listen, he looks an awful lot better, but it is. It's that tells you he's going to be on his feet a little bit more, and he's going to have to only look to use that size. Absolutely. Now, in, in the build-up to this fight, uh, we, we kind of know what Usyk brings. He know, in terms of the mind games, the mental approach to fight week and the fight itself, he yeah. never really looks phased by anything he's took on all these world champions in the backyard. And yeah. a lot of this is is mainly focused on Tyson Fury. And now we say this is two undefeated fighters, which it is. Uh, two guys seemingly at the prime, but as you'll know as a boxer, and you, you judged on your most recent performance now in... Alexander Usyk, he was hurt to the body, whether that was low or not, legal or not. Yeah. Um, he was hurt to the body. Tyson Fury didn't look great against Ngannou. Who do you think has more to prove come fight night? Would you say it's it's Fury because of the Ngannou fight or this I, this issue, I, 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 supposed yeah. issue of Usyk around? No, I'd I definitely, I, I definitely say Fury. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Tyson goes for the body. But, I mean, listen, coming off there, listen, I knew Tyson a long time, but let's not beat around the bush. That... That night against Francis Nagano was a disaster. Not, it was a disaster for boxing, uh, not just not just Tyson Fury, but you could see that. And I think it was the kick up the backside he absolutely needed. And I think with this, I thought we noticed with Tyson, he's been now in in the build up. I mean, I know a few daft stuff gets said, but I'd say the last certainly the last few weeks, he's been respectful towards you, sick, hasn't he? He's been respectful towards Usyk, and I think with with that, is it sort of tells you he knows he's in a real fight. He knows he's in a real fight, but there's a bit of sort of, and I say not, but there'll be a little bit of nerves there and stuff like that. And he'll know he's got a lot to prove. And I think he's probably realised as well with Alexander Usyk, he's probably one of very few fighters in the division who Tyson couldn't get to mentally. There's so many we get to mentally, and you can't, you can't get to Alexander Usyk. So, 
that's I think he's probably realised, well, I'm wasting my time there. Might as well save me energy. Um but I just I just feel like after the Nagano fight, yeah, a lot. And it doesn't get mentioned, it doesn't get mentioned a lot. But for me, those three Deontay Wilder fights, it was very, very clear to see. I mean, I know we mentioned ayahuasca and stuff like that. Might have had something to do with it. Deontay Wilder, and this is in no way any disrespect to Josie Parker, because he's done a fantastic job. He was not the same fighter. He wasn't the same fighter at all. But no one's come to think, if they, or well, some have, but not many, if they took a belt of Tyson as well. Sure, of those three fights, because listen, that last fight was an absolute war. Yeah. It was one of the great heavyweight fights in recent years. So I think with that, it's that's that's a little bit interesting as well. Do you know what I mean? That's a little bit interesting as well. So I just listen, all questions, and it's nearly time for them all to be answered, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And and of course, he's got these these naysayers, these doubters, and is is his reputation or his thoughts with the, the boxing public, the British public, kind of go up and down. And at the minute, he seems to yeah. have more critics than he has in a long time. And um, he, Nick Campbell, uh, the heavyweight sparring partner of, of Tyson, he mentioned yeah. that you know when he, when his back's against the wall, this is when we see the best of him. And, of course, case in point being the Otto Walling fight, when he had that cut, some people thought he should have been stopped on that cut. The very next fight after that, he come back and he, he blew Wilder away. And now we were in the, in the second fight. And now we're talking about is, is Fury avoiding Usyk? Was this cut that he got, which he clearly was injured in sparring, but people yeah. was questioning whether it was legit. His back's firmly against the wall and he's answering more critics maybe than he has since his comeback. Is that where Tyson Fury is his most dangerous? Yeah, I, I probably do think that. I do think that he's um, done that in the past. I think when, I mean, I was I was one of them was really wanting him to, but the first while the fight, I was thinking, oh, it's just no way. And I know it was a draw, but... In, in most people's opinion, he'd done more than enough to win. And that was like completed an unbelievable comeback from where he was. Um, but yeah, it's, I think with him, he, it's, there's not much that gets to Tyson. There's not much that gets to Tyson, but you might not say, but I think criticism and, you know, that those doubters, I think he just loves proving them wrong, doesn't he? He loves proving them wrong. There was no, there was, without a doubt, there was massive complacency there against Francis Nagano. Um, there won't be any of that. He knows there can't be any of that on Saturday night because it just will not be good enough. There couldn't have been any of that for Deontay Wilder because he was capable of knocking him spark out with one shot. So there couldn't be there any of that there. So no, I do, um, like Nick said, I do think that's when we've seen the best of Tyson. And of course, like we say, a lot of this, we're, we're British boxing fans, we're British boxing media, uh, so a lot of it tends to be focused on Tyson Fury, but now with an Alexander Usyk, former undisputed cruiserweight world champion, uh, moving up to heavyweight, he's not put a foot wrong at heavyweight, beating Daniel Dubois, uh, Derek Chisora, Anthony Joshua twice. Just how special of a fighter is Alexander Usyk? And, and is it, he's a live dog in this fight, uh, certainly. Oh, absolutely. He's a very special fighter. Um, when you look at what he's done, listen, before, before the um, the two world titles, look like he's done as an amateur. Look at the fight as he beat as an amateur. He's beat as an amateur. He, you know, he beat your Baturbia. He beat, he's, he beat a who's who. Listen, he went up to heavyweight and uh, was winning fights week in, week out in the World Series of Boxing yeah. when he wasn't a special fighter. And um, no one could deny him. He's going to be He's going to be in the, they say, the first ballot in the Hall of Fame when he retires. He's not not going to be um, an Hall of Famer. He's, he's an unbelievable fighter. Um. One of the best I've been lucky enough to see, you know, in the flesh. But in what he's done, and he's gone into opponents' backyard time after time after time. Um, and when he first moved up to heavyweight, um, I don't know if it was Derek. I don't know if it was Derek it was his first or second fight. Didn't have one over in Washington or Boston. Yeah, didn't didn't was it uh, Weatherspoon? He had, he yeah, had like a, yeah. Been there. Um, and and you thought, oh, is he going to do it? Is he going to mm. do it? And maybe. Taking his time, putting the side on. Some people say he was doing it to entice other fighters into it. But um, I, I remember like a few, a few fights in. Uh, I was speaking to Russ Abner, who's a big part of the um, Alexander Rusic camp, and uh, he said when he was, you know, first turning everywhere, he said they fancied the, they fancied the chance against anyone, but the Fury fight at that time, he thought. That could be tough. Now, as a few years later, 
that's the type of solution you'd be fancy with absolutely anyone, including Tyson Fury and, and fancy coming out on top. So no, with, with some of his skill set, um it's I think it's much more than a good big and beats a good little one. Absolutely. I think Usyk, that's that's what we've all been guilty of, isn't it? Yeah, he's I mean Alexander Usyk is hardly a little one, but yeah. for an heavyweight he is, and he's certainly a little one compared to Tyson Fury, but he's not just a good little one, he's, he's a fantastic little one. And I think that needs to be remembered. And and I just I know we'll probably get onto this, but there's just so many all but one you kind of see. I um I you know I can see all kinds of different outcomes, probably but one. I um do you know what to do that? And and like you say, then just so many questions like has Tyson got old, has he slowed down? Does losing all that weight, does it take away a little bit of the punch resistance? Does it then, does he struggle with the rhythm that use is going to get if he can't use his size? And then is Tyson just too big for him? What will happen when Tyson said, that's what makes it a fascinating fight. I really do believe it's a genuine, you know, 50-50 fight. It's not, listen, if you've asked, I'll, I'll tell you when you ask where I think, if you know, run to the edge, who's your money going on? But it's, it's, a, it's a fight, it's a tough one to call, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And just before we get on to the prediction, and I just mentioned it there with Usyk, and you know, my opinion counts for nothing when speaking to somebody that's lived boxing like yourself or other boxers, trainers, managers, whatnot. Uh, but I remember when he moved up from cruiserweight, and there was a talk of the way the WBO have their mandatory setup that if you're mandatory yeah. at one weight, you can move up from mandatory at the next weight. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I remember, you know, some people were saying we've got this boogeyman coming up from cruiserweight, and I knew Usyk. Obviously, we all knew Usyk with the way yeah. he was going about his business. But you, you just, you did. We all did dismiss, uh, dismiss him in terms of he's too small. This is the land of the giants. These guys aren't your heavyweights of the eighties and seventies, where they're yeah. a bit smaller. These totally. are giant men, and he's come, he's tore it up. And as you say, like he's, he's gone from thinking Tyson Fury is simply just too big to being in a 50-50 fight with the biggest of the big men. Exactly that, exactly that. And um, listen, along the way as well, he's beat Anthony Joshua twice. Yeah. He's now finding really good form again. Um, he's beat some good fighters. He's beat some really, really top level fighters. And do you know, listen, and and you pick him against almost everyone in that division. Like you say, he's, he's one and two. He's probably rate number two in most people's eyes, isn't he? Mm. So I think what he's done and how he's adjusted at heavyweight is. Is brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. And again, just before we touch on the the, the prediction, would you agree that maybe uh, the, the the idea that this is 50-50, that some people picking who's sick, some are picking Fiora, is a lot to do with anti Joshua's renaissance, if you like, these comeback fights. Now, Usyk's victories over him are ageing better. And then Deontay Wilder may be on the decline that Fiora's best wins that, aren't that, looking as good. That That's a great shout. That's a great shout. Um, because, yeah, the... Um, the AJ win is now for you sick. Our agent like a wine because a fine wine because AJ he looks he looks really really well again you know at the minute um, and Wilder he don't but I think there's no denying I think it'd be very hard to take away at that time yeah. Deontay Wilder not many people wanted to touch him mm -hmm. and certainly not many people in the world would have stuck it on him the way Tyson Fury did that second fight so I think I get I do get that but no I think. The both both wins are fantastic wins. They really are. Absolutely. And I'm not going to let you sit on the fence. We're not going to push it off any further. Give us your prediction. Who will be undisputed heavyweight king come May 18th? I have, I've always said a fit and focused Tyson Fury, I believe, is the best heavyweight on the planet. If you would have asked me this 12 months ago, a bit less, pre-Francis Nagano fight, I'd be seeing Tyson Fury with quite a lot of confidence. Now, listen... I'm still saying Tyson Fury, but it's not with the same amount of confidence. Listen, I'm going for Tyson Fury points win close. I think people might see it different ways as well. So it could be a bit of controversy as well. Could be um cards could be very different. Um I won't be surprised if it's a split at all. Do you know like so you know how they see it, how you see the fight? But um I'm gonna say Tyson Fury. I just yeah. I do feel size will come into it. I feel size will come into it. Like I said before, I think I could see most outcomes, even a draw, other than I'd, I'd be very surprised if Usyk managed to stop Fury. But um, no, I'm going Tyson Fury, close points decision. 
Great pick, and uh, as you're saying, there's no real outcome that can surprise anybody. Um, just before I let you go, just a quick word on your old foe, a good friend of Alexander Usyk, Vasily Lomachenko regaining a lightweight world title this past weekend, yeah. stopping George Kambosis in impressive fashion. Just how great of a fighter is Vasily Lomachenko? He still looks like he can do a bit, doesn't he? <laughs> He's a... <laughs> Alex. You're not calling for the rematch just yet, Ant? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Listen, I... Uh... I always, and this is where I think you've got to, I think when you know, Cambosa is sort of due to fight before and stuff like that, I, um, I, he was always wrong for George Cambosa, in my opinion. Listen, he's always, he's wrong for almost everyone, every uh, fighter on the planet. And that weight, never mind George Cambosa, but I just feel he was. And uh, there's some fair play to Cambosa he brought and he didn't stop trying, but there was just levels between them, wasn't there? And I thought he'd he done all right at times, but. Lomachenko, I think, listen, he might have slowed down a little bit with a few little things, but he's still absolute class to watch. He's a dream to watch. And again, you'd you'd back him up against almost anyone in that talent pack division, wouldn't you? It's um he's a special fighter, is what in my opinion, he's a once in a lifetime fighter. And um he looks like he's still got a little bit left, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And as I say, and I said off camera, we could sit here and speak. All night would be an absolute pleasure, but I don't want to keep you for too much more of your time. We look forward to Saturday, Undisputed Heavyweight World Title yeah. Fight, Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk. And as always, it's a pleasure, man. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, mate. Take care.